Hello, welcome back to another episode of Show Up with Sarah. Is just little old me here, and today I am discussing the beginning uh, of a very broad topic. And I guess actually, you could say that all of my podcasts are about this this topic, which is taking control of your life. And the reason why I want to discuss this is because I am currently in the I I can't remember if it would be called the uh, like an oxymoron, um, hypocritical, contradictive ironic. Uh, I'm not sure the exact word. I, to be fair, I had the worst sleep. So my brain is not hundred percent, which is exactly why I should be recording this right now, I guess. Um, but yeah. And so I, on my social media, I am choosing to discuss the general idea of regaining your power, which is not a thing that I think can happen. I think that we can, learn how to unblock ourselves from from our power right um we can learn how to better tap into our power but i am a believer that once we recognize and own our power we have it you will hear people say things like well i was stripped of my power or this trauma made me lose myself and lo- i lost all of my power now it would be irresponsible for me to say that there are not situations where that takes place, extreme poverty, extreme abusive uh, situations. Um, Slavery is still a thing, right? Like there are people legitimately in this world who are powerless. So to say that that's not a thing for literally anybody is irresponsible. Um, However, for people who may be listening to this, even if you are in an abusive situation, um, you still have a power, a power of choice, a power of mindset, a power of, of, of some will, right? How you're going to react to something, how you're going to keep going or not keep going. Those are very small examples of how you may still have power and choose to, 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 um, sit in it each day or own it in different ways. But the, the big thing here is that I believe that. And so this one, I believe that when you have your power, you don't lose it. You just encounter things that block you from being able to tap into it and own it in the way that you once had, or you are growing it and you are learning it. And so you may have moments where you you can't quite get to it. Something happens, rejection, loss, um, PTSD, so many things and so many situations can happen that make you shut down, close yourself off, go into recovery mode, go into protection mode. And it blocks you from being able to identify or step into or own or feel your power. And I'm going to explain why that happens. Um, In order to own your power, you have to actually be very open because power is kind of like sonar. When um, a bat is moving, they put out a noise so that they know what is in front of them or around them. So they put the noise, it hits and it comes back to them. So they know, they know what's around them. They know their environment. And so owning your power is very similar. You can feel it. You can tap into it. You can manifest it right here in your chest and allow it to radiate within you. But if you are learning about your power, if you're learning how to tap into it, if you're learning what it feels like, nine times out of 10, you are using it like a sonar. You, we all know the idea of walk into a room, like you own it, walk in there, like you own the building, right? Because we know that if you walk in really shy and, and closed off and quiet, the energy that you receive back is going to be barely anything. But if you walk in, like you own the place, we all know that the energy is going to bounce off of people and come back to you and you're going to strut your stuff. So Power, owning your power is very much like sonar. You put it out there with an energy, it bounces off of people or things and it comes back to you. And that's how you begin to feel that power, right? Growing, which is a super good and healthy thing. So when you are closed off, when you are saying, okay, I want to control more, I want to take control of my life, you actually get really tight fisted. Um, if you've ever heard the phrase white knuckling, it's when we say this has to happen and then you hold on to it 
in a way that you've decided that allows for no wiggle room flexibility um, or, or real real life um, instances, but you you white knuckle it because you are holding on to it so tight. You're trying to control it in every way, shape, or form. When we are white knuckling ourselves, I I want to take control of my life, and you, then you hold on to your life you are actually getting super restrictive. And so the energy and the power that you are trying to create, it can't go anywhere. The truth is, is that when you own your power, you may have it radiating within you, but it will bubble out. It will go. And if you are being restrictive with who you are and the energy that you put out and the power that you you have and you own, you actually will limit the power that you have because the power I have, it flows out of me because I will, I, I will tap into it and I will generate it and I will sit with it and allow it to bubble over. And I don't want to restrict that at all. I want it to explode out of me. I want other people to feel it. I want it to be in the room when I get there. I want people to know and say, well, even with me not in the room, oh yeah, I mean, Sarah has presence, right? You know, and so if we are being white knuckling with ourselves saying, I need to take control of my life and it has to happen this way and I need it to look this way. I need it to feel like it's progressing in this way. All this stuff, that means that you are getting really, really, really protective. And when we are protective, we get really, really closed in, restricted. We get here. Um, And so the reason why you get restrictive and the reason why you get protective is because when you are faced with the possibility of, quote, failure, you don't know how you're going to react. People who own their power understand that, give me, failure will just happen. Failure helps with growth and failure is also dictated on what success means and looks like. So it's not a failure if let's say I move and I have a rough couple of weeks. Now, in order to begin tapping into your power and allowing it to grow, and again, you know, back to what I said, or oxymoronic, hypocritical, contradictive, ir- ironic, whatever it may be, when I'm talking on social media about regaining your power and I say, well, you can't regain it. You just have it. Well, what I mean is that you are reminding yourself. But the reason why I don't say reminding yourself is because there are plenty of people who I would say, oh, just remind yourself of your power. And they say, I've never felt it. I've never had it. So you can't be reminded of something that you've never tapped into before. Now I say regain because that's something different that triggers a different thought for people. It's the idea of, you know, I, I want to, maybe, maybe I felt it back in high school. Maybe I felt it this one time when I did this one thing. So we're regaining something that quote is lost. We, we had it once upon a time and you can think of one moment in your life usually If I say like, I want you to regain that moment, I want you to regain that feeling. So while what I'm saying isn't in line with what I actually believe, it's just me trying to help you get, get closer to me, get closer to to the idea and the concept that I'm putting out there, because I think that it is important. So if you are thinking, okay, well, I, I would like to be reminded, I'd like to gain power. Um, but I don't know. I really have not felt it. That's when the, how do you unblock yourself comes in? Now, how does this work with, how do I take control of my life? Because we have a lot of control. I have control of if I'm going to make this podcast or not, if I'm going to take a call or not, if I'm going to drink some water or not, right? There are lots of things that we do have control over. So when we say, I'm going to take control of my life, what we actually mean is I'm going to start showing up. I'm going to show up. And when we show up, 
again, we sometimes think restrictive. I have to start working out um, this amount. I have to start making this much money. We, we, we start pinning ourselves into space. What we need to look at it as, or how we need to look at it is, how do I prepare myself to navigate and grow and learn and keep growing who I am and owning who I am through life? So, you know, why, two weeks ago, I guess it was, yeah, two weeks ago, I put out my first podcast here, uh, from here in Chicago. And I think that I had only been here for like a week at that point. It doesn't matter. And uh, the reality is, is that it was a really long, like two and a half, like three weeks, you know, and I'm at the end of my fourth week now, the end of my first month. And it, I was prepared for it to be uncomfortable. And it was, there's a lot of discomfort. If I had said, okay, I'm going to make this move and I want it to look this way. And I already know that it's going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to make sure that I don't lean into it. And I do this and I do that and X and Y and Z and blah, 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 blah. that is me trying to white knuckle my reaction and my growth in a situation that is uncomfortable. Now I can, my power yeah, it got blocked there. I blocked myself from it because I was trying to control things that I couldn't control. Little things that were um, frustrating or uncomfortable or uh, annoying. I was trying to con- get, I got really protective and really restrictive because I was trying to control what I could, which was just me, but I was trying to control in the wrong ways. And the reality is that we can only control so much. I can't say you can't get annoyed by this. The feeling of annoyance will come. What happens and what do we do? So the power when we own it actually comes from when we say this could happen, how do we show up for it? We won't always be able to not have an emotion, Sarah. So how do we react to it? How do we handle it? How do we move through it? How do we we live in it? Do we lean in or do we lean out? And so when we are trying to get really white knuckly with ourselves, you're not allowed to feel this. You are not allowed to take a day off. You're not allowed to eat that cookie. You're not allowed to, to, um, not want to have sex. There's so many things that men encounter specifically that women encounter specifically that, that different groups encounter. Um, I can't get to all of them. Um, but we can't say you're not allowed to do this. Because that means that the minute that it does happen, we have that emotion, we want that cookie, we, we, we are emotional in front of that woman. Now we feel like we've lost all of our power. But what happened is because you restricted yourself so much, you actually blocked yourself from the power that can be gained from owning the decision that you made, from owning the path that you took. And so when I got restrictive and I got here and I was trying to protect myself from all the discomfort, I actually was blocking myself from the power that I was gaining, truly actually gaining from standing in, in discomfort, from standing in and doing something that is brave. Because I wasn't feeling brave, I was saying I wasn't brave. But if I had just said, you know what, this is hard and it's brave that I did this and it's uncomfortable and it's not, it's, I'm not, I'm not at hundred percent. I actually would have been receiving all of the power. We have to be completely open because the power that we have, it comes from oh, oh, outside of us. It comes from what pings back. It comes from, from being strong enough to navigate life, to stand in with life, to be here when life is happening. Like that's crazy. And so a, when we talk about regaining or reminding ourselves of our power, it is simply I acknowledging that at this current moment, I may be blocking myself. Why? What's happening that's making me block myself from my own power? Well, I'm trying to control things that are outside of my control. I'm trying to control how I grow my power. I'm trying to control how I navigate life. So when we say, I want to take control of my life, what we are really saying What we need to be saying is, I want to be more prepared to ensure that I show up more often and 
more of my best. I believe that I said this in the previous book po- or previous um, sh- episode of how to not be depressed, you know, when you make a big change, but I knew that I was going to experience discomfort. I knew that it was not going to be fun when I first moved. So I prepared mentally and emotionally. I said, okay, Sarah, at different points, we're going to feel alone. It's going to feel quiet. So we have to make sure that we reach out to people. Um, We're going to feel off. So we're going to have to probably get into a routine. We are going to want to push ourselves past the discomfort as quickly as possible. So we do have to allow ourselves to have moments where we feel overwhelmed or defeated or like we just can't do it today. Like these are all okay. And by mentally preparing myself for that, I was actually allowing myself in those moments to own the power I have to allow myself to navigate life in real time. We, while we may think of owning power in a very boisterous and and firm and loud way, there's also the owning of power in these small and subtle ways. Take, for example, the young woman who is kind of meek and quiet and doesn't speak up and she maybe she has social anxiety and 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 I and I use a young woman because I think that's easier for us to picture. And you know, she works at some cool advertising agency and and her boss just is always on her. Uh, unfairly, unjustly, always on her. And the day that she finally says, no, that's not okay. Right now that may be just a blip on the boss's uh, radar. The boss goes, excuse me. Okay. And they move on. But for that person, that was a very small way of saying, no, I'm using the power I have. I'm using the power of my voice. I'm using the power to show up for myself in this moment. It may get glossed over in the big scheme of things by everybody else. And it may not seem that big at all, but that is a subtle moment of saying, this is the, in real time, I am showing up. I am taking the power that is saying no and showing up for exactly what of what life dealt me in this moment. So when we choose to powerfully say, today is not the day for me. I knew that there would be days like this. And today is one of those days and I'm not hundred percent. And that is okay. It is powerful that I have the courage to say, I'm not okay today to do whatever it is. I have to, to prioritize myself, my mental health or whatever it may be that those are subtle moments of power that we can allow ourselves to say, wow, I'm really freaking proud of myself. Look at me doing the right thing. Look at me adhering to the processes and the preparations that I put in place maybe weeks ago. Holy crap. I can stick to standard operating procedures. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I've already gone on long enough because we'll continue to talk about this in different forms. And if you haven't looked at my social media, make sure that you do so that you can be following along with, with the regaining and the power and blah, 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 blah. But the, the thing is, and the, what I want to start here with you is I want you to ask yourself, are you actually allowing the power that you have that is around you? Maybe you don't even recognize it to flow into you. Maybe you don't recognize how powerful you are, but other people say it. Other people, I mean, one thing that people have said to me is always, oh, like you seem taller than you are. I guess it's just the, like, maybe like the way you carry yourself. So even when I felt powerless, other people saw power around me. So when I think I have to take control of my life. And I have to be better. I have to do better to make more. I have to be all of these things. I'm so protective that people are telling me about the power that they re- they feel, and I can't receive it because I'm I'm walled up. So 
ask yourself, are there things, are there instances where you are white knuckling your life and yourself because you are trying to take control of your life and it's actually hindering you from being able to receive, tap into, and own the power that you have, that you never lost, that you just cut yourself away from. If you are having a hard time with this, then message me. <laughs> this, this is literally what I do. I'd be happy to help you. And make sure you keep listening to my podcast. Uh, make sure you find me on Instagram and Facebook at SA Hips so that you can learn more about this. And let's get you to a place of real power. So that at any time, you can tap into it, you can create it, you can feel it, and you can use it. You can own the power that you have in this world and in this life to make you and the world around you even better. So thank you and keep showing up. <laughs>